In our previous video, episode 9, we saw the city of Babel occupied and then with the land of Sumer divided and at war, after the fall of the Isin dynasty, Babel had gained an independence. Assur in the upper Tigris region also became independent. Eshnuna gained independence as well. Thus we have at least five players vying for power and control of trade in Sumer. Assur, Larsa, Isin, Eshnuna, and Babel. In this video, we will map out Old Babylon and the Hittite Kingdom, which took place from 1894 to 1595 BC. The name Babel is a word from the Hebrew scriptures meaning confusion of God, because he brought confusion upon their languages at the Tower of Babel. The Akkadian word Babylim means gate of the gods. This word was then altered into the Greek form Babylon later on in history, when the Greeks took over in the 4th century BC. These three words are all referring to the same city, Babylon. While the region around Sumer was weak and at war, a young Amaru prince named Sabu Abum took control of the city of Babylon. He had great dreams for the city to become great. He began construction of a large city wall, but died before he finished it. His successor, Samu Lael, continued construction of the wall. During his reign, the king of Eshnuna built fortifications to defend a crossing point on the Euphrates River in order to protect a trade route. The kings of Babylon, Assur, and Larsa erected a barricade together to block him. The next three kings of Babylon, Sabuim, Apilsin, and Sin Mubalat, continued to expand Babylon gradually over the next 50 years, preparing for the greatest king of the old Babylon dynasty, Hammurabi, the great lawgiver of Babylon. Hammurabi inherited a small city-state with a great wall called Babylon. He spent the first five of his 42-year rule setting justice in the land. He produced the oldest known codified law, Codified means that it is arranged into sections. The Hammurabi Law Code was discovered in the city of Susa in 1901 and is now in the Louvre in Paris. It is a seven-foot basalt finger. The fingernail is carved with an image of Hammurabi receiving the law from the sun god Shamash. The Law Code is written in the Akkadian script, incorporating an epilogue and a prologue with 282 laws, bringing justice to the people through a written law code. The law code deals with slavery, property, criminal behavior, and divorce, enacting often brutal punishment. For example, if a boy hit his father, he could have his hands cut off. The punishment for murder was impalement. The punishment for incest was to be burned alive. An accused person would be thrown into the river. If he drowns, the accuser gets his house. But if he floats, the accuser would be executed and the accused gets his house. If a freeborn person killed the slave, he would get a fine. But if a slave killed someone, they would be impaled. Men were allowed to have extramarital relationships with slaves. But if a woman did it, she would be thrown into the river with her lover. There were set wages for different occupations, creating different classes of people. There were judicial proceedings with a judge and witnesses, beginning with a presumption of innocence, and false accusers were severely punished. Hammurabi's law code was practiced for centuries after the fall of Old Babylon and became a foundation for the structure of law that still exists today. Hammurabi then turned to expanding his kingdom. He then took the city of Isin from Rim Sin, the king of Larsa. Rim Sin had enjoyed a 60-year rule, the longest recorded in Sumerian history. Hammurabi then took Uruk and other areas, expanding his kingdom in all directions. He paused to set up military bases and temples, and then he advanced again each time, and then moved forwards, eventually subjugating the entire land of Sumer. He took the title King of Sumer and Akkad, 
He then turned his attention to subjugating Elam, who was weakened from fighting with Ishnuna. After this, he faced down a coalition of three leaders, Ishnuna, Asur, and the Gudians, defeating them all and bringing the kingdom of Ashnuna to an end, and subjugating the other two to pay him tribute money. Hammurabi was now the sole ruler of southern Mesopotamia, rivaling the power that the Akkadian kingdom once had. He was in fact Akkadian, since the Akkadian kingdom of Sargon ruled the entire region for 100 years, these people no longer considered themselves Amaru. They considered themselves Akkadian or Babylonian, as opposed to being Sumerian or Assyrian. During the remainder of Hammurabi's rule, the Akkadian language became more popular in Sumer than the Sumerian language was. Artwork and culture was no longer dedicated solely to the gods. People became more the focus of art and culture. There was a great interest put upon science and technology, but still incorporating a lot of divination and magic within it. Asur, on the other hand, had retained a Semitic background. They retained the biblical name Ashur, who was the son of Shem, in the Table of Nations of Genesis chapter 10. But they made Asur their god to protect them. The other sons of Shem were Elam, Aram, Lud, and Arphaxad, who was the forebearer of Abraham. Abraham was called out of Ur, making him a Sumerian. It is important to understand the relationship between the Babylonian and Assyrian and Sumerian powers. Bible prophecy makes extensive use of these powers as metaphors. The Isin and Babylonian dynasties both were Akkadian people who were from the Amaru. The Amaru were in control of Canaan and Aleppo at this time, but at this time also the Akkadians were now making great kingdoms of their own. During the rule of Hammurabi, there were powerful changes happening to the west and north of his kingdom. Powerful forces were moving that would change the political map of the entire region. We will take a pause from Hammurabi for a few minutes and take a look at these forces. We look briefly at the Hittites and their main city, Hattasus, in episode 5. Now we will continue the narrative to bring us up to date with the Hittites and a few others. The ancient Hittites were descendants of Heth, a Canaanite named in the Table of Nations of the Bible. We covered the Table of Nations in episode 7. The ancient Hittites were later replaced by Indo-European migrants who migrated down through the Caucasus region. These migrants called themselves Hurrian. The Hurrians eventually populated out the sons of Heth and became the new Hittite. This transition happened in the days of the Hittite kingdom. Later on, the Hittite empire from 1450 to 1180 BC became a force powerful enough to go to battle with the pharaoh of Egypt. But that is for a future episode. In this episode, we will focus on the old Hittite kingdom from 1680 to 1450 BC. The Hittites lived in central Anatolia, the peninsula we now call Turkey. Central Anatolia was abundant in timber, silver, gold, copper, bronze, and other minerals. They had very much value in resources for trade. Their country was called Hatti, and the capital city was Hattasus. Hatti was made up of small fortified city-states. The ancient Hittites traded extensively with the Akkadian kingdom during the greatest heights of the dynasty under Naram Sin. After the fall of the Akkadian kingdom, the Hittites began trading with the Assyrians when the Isin dynasty was weakening during the days of Ishmedagan. This trade was then disrupted by the Hurrians who settled in Armenia and raided the trade routes, making it too dangerous to move goods along the route. The Hurrians were migrating down through the Caucasus region into Mesopotamia and Anatolia. There were another group of people called Mitanni. They are related to the Hurrians, and they settled in Upper Mesopotamia. 
This was during the time of the first four kings of old Babylon, when they were building the wall and the land of Sumer was in civil war. This loss of trade with the Hittites greatly weakened Assyria, allowing Hammurabi to overtake Assyria in 1760 BC. The loss of trade with the Assyrians caused the Hittite cities to decline and get weaker. The most powerful city of the Hittites was a northern city called Kassara. When the Hurrians became too much of a threat, King Pithanas moved his people from Kassara and founded the city of Kanesh, the son of King Pithanas, who was named Anitas, ended up attacking and destroying the city of Hattasus in about 750 BC. He also placed a curse over the city against anyone who would build there. King Anitas greatly expanded the kingdom around Kanesh and became known as the Great King. His curse over the city of Hattasus was legendary. He sowed weeds over it, and he said, Whoever becomes king after me and settles Hattasus again, may the storm god of heaven smite him. This happened at about the time of the death of Hammurabi. By the time of his death, Hammurabi had built a very powerful nation from Babylon. But in the last part of his days, forces were at work beyond his control. There were a large migration of Hurrians into northern Mesopotamia and Anatolia. There was a nation of warriors being assembled from the Iranian plateau who were named Kassites. There was a growing war between Hittites and Amaru over trade through Aleppo. Since the northern route had been cut off by Hurrian bandits, the southern route through Aleppo and on to Egypt and Africa had become much more important. The rights to selling goods into Babylon also was very valuable to the Amaru and to the Hittites for survival. Since Hammurabi had weakened Assur's position, there were other groups, like the Kassites, getting more powerful. As trade had suffered by division and war over important parts of the routes, Babylon's tax revenues decreased and taxes were raised. The land was being over-farmed and was producing less. There was the same problem that had been with the Akkadian kingdom. The people were ruled, but not willingly. When Hammurabi died, he was succeeded by his son, Sansu Eluna. His kingdom began successfully and peacefully, but it didn't take long for trouble to begin. A descendant of the last king of Isin began a war of independence to break Sumer away from Babylonian control. His alliance rallied all the cities south of Nippur to join the fight. The Babylonian forces could never actually defeat them, because they would attack and then retreat into the swamplands at the mouth of the Euphrates. This dynasty became known as the Sea Land People, who would harass anyone ruling over Sumer for the next 300 years. We did speak briefly in episode 5 about the modern-day Marsh Arabs of Iraq, who occupy these marshlands today. Some of their customs date back to the people living in the marshes of Iraq in ancient times. No army could march there and no navy could sail there. That was their strength. Another rebel arose at this time named Rimsin, the same name as the last king of Larsa in earlier days. He joined forces with the king of Eshnuna against the king of Babylon, Sansu Iluna, and they were defeated by him. During the war, the cities of Ur and Uruk were burned to the ground. The king of Eshnuna was taken prisoner back to Babylon, where he was strangled to death. During these wars, Assur once again broke away and gained independence from Babylon. The son and successor of Sansu Eluna was Abi Eshu. He dammed the Tigris River in an attempt to drain the marshes and attack the sea land people but the dam failed and the Tigris River could not be contained. He also allowed Kassite migrant farm workers to settle in his land, and he also repelled a raid from the Kassites. The son and successor of Abi Eshu was Ami Ditana. 
Not much is known about Emmy de Tana, but it was during his rule that big changes took place among the Hittites. In the Hittite city of Kanesh, a successful coup placed Labarnas I on the Hittite throne. He expanded his kingdom south to the Mediterranean Sea, boasting that he had made the sea his frontier. He divided his kingdom between his two sons before he died. The next king is called Labarnas II by historians because he is the son of Labarnas, but he called himself Hattasilis. Labarnas II inherited a great kingdom, but the Hurrians in the east were making trade with the Assyrians impossible for him. He moved his capital from Kanesh to the cursed city of Hattasus and named himself Hattasilis, which means man of Hattasus. The word Hattasilis is believed to be where the word Hittite is derived from. The city of Hattasus is a well-fortified natural fortress. Hattasilis expanded his kingdom east into Anatolia and then he moved against Aleppo. Aleppo was a major trading hub of the Amaru between the sea and across the Euphrates River at Karshemesh, where it would go to the Hurrians or downstream to Babylon or to the Mitanni. There was a lot of trade through Aleppo. Hattasilis built strongholds along the coast, cutting off Aleppo from the coastal cities, strangling their supplies. He believed that great riches were held in Egypt and in Babylon. He was attacked from the east and from the west. He was under siege in the fortress of Hattasus, but it didn't last long. Within a year, he had pushed back against the Hurrians and renewed his assault on Aleppo. During the attack, he was killed, leaving his kingdom to his grandson. Ami Sedeca and Sansu Ditana were the last two kings of the old Babylon dynasty. They were consumed with art and trade and writing literature as their power slowly dwindled and their enemies grew stronger. There was an outpost of the Amaru along the Euphrates River between Aleppo and Babylon named Mari. It was taken over by the Kassites, who had their sights on Babylon. The Hittite grandson of Hattasilis was named Marsilis I. Marsilis had his sights on Aleppo, as his father had. He made an alliance with the Kassites, that if they helped him win Aleppo, then he would help them win Babylon. After the Hittites and Kassites traded together for 15 years, making Aleppo weak, Mercilus I then attacked Aleppo, completely destroying it. He then took Karshemesh and joined the Kassites against Babylon. Babylon, the city with great walls, was plundered and burned in one day by a surprise attack of the Hittites and Kassites. With the death of Sansu Ditana in 1595, the old Babylon dynasty came to an end. Mercilus I then carried the chief gods of Babylon, including Merduk, from Babylon to Mari. He left Babylon to the Kassites and returned to Hattasus, building his defenses up. He was killed in a palace coup, and the Hittite history falls back into obscurity from that point until the emergence of the Hittite Empire, but that is for a later video. Before that, we need to go back to 2040 BC and take a look at Egypt, the Middle Kingdom period, in our next episode.